Hey guys, I'm back with another monthly update. In today's episode number 16, I'm chatting about two finished objects and a whip. And the theme is fingering weight yarn. Hey there, welcome to my channel, String Things by Mel. My name is Melissa. I also go by Mel. I'm a stay-at-home mom living in Vancouver, Canada, and on my channel, I chat and share everything about my knitting hobby. Today, welcome. Uh, this is episode 16 of the String Things podcast, my monthly update where I share my finished objects, swips, and new yarn. So today is about not one, but two finished objects made out of fingering weight yarn and not just fingering weight yarn held with another strand, but just straight up fingering weight yarn. Um, and my whip is also with fingering weight yarn. So today is all about fingering weight yarn. Um, I'm going to try not to say that too many times. Any, I'm done saying it. Fingering weight yarn. Okay. One last time. Okay. So why that's a big deal is because if you had asked me over a year ago um, whether I would be completing a fingering weight yarn garment, sorry I said it again, <laughs> I would have said heck no. And the backstory is that I tried to make a cumulus tee out of knitting for all of pure silk and straight up um, knitting with three millimeter needles with silk uh, made me feel nauseous. Um, yeah, strange, right? Something about staring at that yarn, um, the discomfort in my hands. I know it literally made me feel sick. So I had to put that whip aside for a long time. And then it wasn't until late last year, I decided to buy, um, wool fingering yarn, um, and put the Friday tea into my queue. And I thought maybe using an animal fiber wool is a lot nicer um, in the hands. I thought it'd be more successful. But also to add to the success, um, I discovered a new type of needle. I saw on New Wave Knitting, um, Jeanette New Wave Knitting on Instagram, she was gifted some collage needles, which are square needles. It's made in Canada. Um, and she said that it made her knitting experience more comfortable um, for a small size, like three millimeter needles. So I looked them up. Um, pricing seemed fair, so I decided to buy them and give it a go. And here we are. I am two projects done and one on the go with three millimeter needles. So I am a happy customer. <laughs> I'll quickly share with you guys, uh, show you the needles in case you're unfamiliar with them. So collage with a K. Uh, needles with a story. For over 40 years, career services has helped thousands of people with disabilities find employment. Every needle purchased enables us to continue to provide inclusive training real work experiences and employment for those we serve. Uh, and then it says, see our story and it has um, a link to their website. I'll put the link in the description as well in case you're curious. Uh, I purchased my needles from on Etsy. There are some stores which uh, carry these needles, um, but I went through Etsy. There's a store in Dawson Creek, BC, um, where I actually ordered these particular ones. And there's also another shop. Oh, sorry. The one in Dawson Creek, uh, their shop is called We Are Faking Sanity. And the other shop I purchased from is um, in Quebec. And it's called Knitting Anxiety. And it's actually my one of my go-to knitting needle uh, shops on Etsy. So purchased from two different shops just because there's, um, they had just, different offerings um, for the collage needles but here they are they are square the particular these particular ones are 5.5 inches in length i also have the 3.5 inch length uh, and i actually prefer the shorter length 
when I'm working in the round, but the longer length is nicer when I'm working flat. So uh, yes, I have both. And in terms of how they feel like, so they are metal. They, I would say they are definitely less slippery than the Chow Gu metal needles. Um, Cause that's what I was attempting to use before. I think they are less slippery than the Addy needles as well. That, those have a real polished metal surface, the ones I was using. Um, but definitely um, bamboo would be grippier than these. So I feel like these are a nice happy medium in between. Um, I only wish that the points were a bit pointier, but now that I've been using them for long enough, I've kind of gone over that lack of pointiness. So, but just thought I would mention that. So Friday tea, let's get into it. This is the front. <laughs> I am extremely happy with this. Well, not only because I was able to finish it, it took me a long time, but I also had quite a number of other projects on the go. I, in the time of working on this top, I've done two test knits. Um, so obviously priority went to those, but anyways, um, the details. So this is the Friday tea from Petite Knit. I use Cascade 220 fingering. And so the main color is this one called Buff. And the stripes are in the color Doskin. And when you see them together in skein form, it, at first you might think that they don't contrast very well. Um, but you can see the garment, you can clearly see the stripes. And so that's perfect. I didn't want as stark of a contrast like white and black, but I just wanted, you know, for there to be an actual difference because then why else would you make a striped sweater? Um, so I did buy the recommended amount of yarn, which was 200 grams of a main color and 50 grams of contrast color. So those numbers come from the recommended yarn, which is Saniskarn Sunday. That's a nice smooth, six ply five four ply more plies this is only two plies um so i think this one being a two ply and not as tightly spun it's you know the t is broken rib stitch but this adds a little bit even more texture to that broken rib stitch which at first straight up honestly i was like did i pick the wrong yarn um but i'm actually happy with the overall texture um, and I think, like, I kind of like the wonkiness of it. It just makes it look hand knit. <laughs> I'll give you guys another close up of it there. I'm sorry if you hear a chime right now. There's my dryer going off. I'm doing housework today. And the windows are open. I don't live in a quiet neighborhood, so you might hear lawnmowers, you might hear fire trucks, sirens, so apologies so I did buy the recommended amount of yarn but I have a full skein of the main color left um, so I only used three of the main color and I only purchased a single skein of the contrasting color but this is what I have left so I used 150 grams of the main color and 39 grams of the contrast color so yes more than half um of the contrast color and in terms of price because we talk about prices now i wrote down here so i purchased this last year from yarn canada which is an online only shop and at the time their flat rate shipping rate was only nine dollars it is now eleven dollars which for canadian shipping that's still a really good price so these skeins go for sorry look my turn my face this way so it's not as awkward 6.99 each and so with taxes and the shipping the material cost for the friday tea is 39 dollars 
and 44 cents. Um, and that's for what was actually used. But in terms of like the total amount of yarn, because I do have an extra skein um, just for kicks, if you want to do price it out that way of like thinking about how much I spend versus lost kind of thing, um, the total cost was $46.78. So that's Canadian with taxes and with the shipping included. So yeah, so just under $40 for the actual material cost, which I think is really great for a tea. It's um, Cascade 220 is a Peruvian wool and it was my first time using it and I would definitely use it again. They have a really good um, color offering um, in their lineup and for me it feels soft enough on my skin. Okay, so that is all the details, the pattern, the yarn, the pricing. I knit size extra small. Don't know if I said that, but. So I knit it up exactly as instructed to the patterns. I did not make any modifications to stitch counts, to body length. I knit the exact same number of stripes as the sample. The size works for me. The only thing um, kind of like negative I could say about the pattern and I've mentioned it before is the placement of the increases and the juggler stripe method so the rows start the first stitch is a purl stitch and the way the pattern the increases work you start around with an increase and Combine that with the juggler stripe method. I thought it was really sloppy and it just was weird and wonky. So after a couple instances of doing the juggler stripe method on the increase rounds, I stopped because not doing the juggler method actually looked better. Um, I did have someone comment on my podcast episode when I mentioned this. And I'm really glad because I thought I was just going crazy. I was like, am I the only one that, like, am I just doing this completely wrong? So I'm really glad that someone else mentioned it because then I feel a little bit more, I felt a bit more sane after that. Um, but I did go back to doing the jogless stripe method on the body because there was no more, there's no increasing. So it was fine. Uh, in terms of fit, oh, there is kind of one modification I did, but it doesn't affect um, the size. When I did the collar, which is a fold over collar, there is a pearl row like you might typically have in fold over um, construction. So the rib row before the pearl row and the ribbing row after, I held a strand of a knitting elastic. I just thought, you know, what I've done is add elastic after the fact, like after a garment is done, but because I found this really thin knitting elastic and it actually said on the package that you could hold it with yarn, I decided to give it a go. Now, I can't say whether that was a good choice or a bad choice. Um, did it help prevent the collar from splaying out after blocking? Maybe. Um, I also was careful not to really stretch out that area when I was blocking as I typically do um, but I guess we'll see over time after wears um, but I'm hoping it does help and because that is something that was relatively easy to do I mean just hold an extra strand um, while knitting it up so in terms of fit I think so this is something I may have to reblock. Um, so it could be a blocking issue or it could just be I need to pay better attention about um, yoke depth. So the yoke depth I think is a little bit short on me. Um, now, if I was wearing this in cooler weather, then maybe not so much. But because I was caught wearing this on a kind of a warm day, the proximity of wool to my armpit area yeah I got a little warm there I wasn't sweating but it was you know I could feel it and I I don't think I have to describe it in any more detail I think you guys get it like most people don't want wool up in their pits so if the yoke depth was longer then maybe I would avoid 
um, wool in the pit area. Um, however, if I'm wearing this on a cool day, then I'm definitely not going to be worrying about sweating because I typically run cold. So we'll see. So I also want to try reblocking this because of how high the collar sits on me. My collar definitely sits up higher than um, what's shown in the sample photos. So maybe is that because I have the knitting elastic in the top? I don't know. So I'm going to try to reblock the collar and see if that lowers it down because then that would actually help with lowering down the yoke. So I will report back to you guys um, when and if I ever get around to that. But definitely something I want to do in term, especially for you know, long term where I'm making sure that this is as comfortable as it can be and that I have, you know, exhausted all options. I think the broken rib stitch pattern definitely, along with the stripes, definitely helped me um, be successful and actually complete this garment um, because it was like the, you know, one more row, ooh, one more stripe. Oh, I'm, I did that stripe already. Okay, one more stripe. Um, that definitely helped me along. Had this been all stockinette like the Cumulus Tea, I don't know if I would have had the same enjoyment. I'm really loving um, texture knitting right now. So that was a big plus for me. I also think it's just really comfortable and squishy and it looks um, nice in a garment. Um, what did my husband say? Oh yes, when I put it on the first time, my husband said, oh, you look very designer. Um, yeah, I'll take it. <laughs> my husband actually had an interest in describing my knit garment. So yeah, um, that made me feel good. And um, in terms of recommending the pattern, um, yeah, I would. I think given if you knit this for yourself, in like a small amount of positive ease i think that can be really flattering on most body types um so something close to the skin um, because this doesn't have compound raglan shaping i would be wary of making it too oversized if you're someone that likes to knit up you know two or three sizes larger uh than your bust um just because of how much um extra fabric you might have here then it's going to look a little less flattering unless you know you're looking for that boyfriend shirt look and then other than that jogless stripe thing on uh, on the increased rounds of the yoke the pattern um is pretty easy to follow i mean petite knit patterns are pretty well written but i feel like i'm at a point where i've done enough of them that i'm just so used to the writing style so I might be starting to get blind to any things that maybe a new person would um, get held up with all right the next finished object which could be poor management on my part for spontaneously deciding to record um, I don't have because I dressed my daughter in it today and she's gone out with my husband so you guys will get some footage um, of the garment but the next one is another fingering weight yarn garment and it is um, the viola tea which is a test knit for sarah she goes by noelle knits on instagram and it was my second time test knitting for her i test knit the hannah cardigan which was released in may or was that april i can't recall now <laughs> Um, but by the time you view this episode, I believe, um, the pattern for the Viola T will be released. Sarah's planning a June 14th release date for this, um, it's children's top down raglan T and it does have, um, compound raglan shaping, which is really nice. And there is a nice little scallop color work detail on the end of the sleeves and on the end of the body. Now, you could totally omit that color work and you would have a really good basic tea pattern for your child. The size range is from one year all the way up to uh, 10 years. Um, but the sizes are, say, like size one to two years is a size, size two to three years is a size. I knit size two to three. My daughter, Darcy, is two and a half and it fits her like 
perfectly. There's enough ease in there. She can run around. I think there's enough ease for her to grow into as well, but it doesn't look too big for her. Um, mine is Knit Up in a Special to Me yarn. It's yarn that I purchased from Knit City last year, which was my very first time attending any sort of yarn festival. And it happened to be the first yarn I purchased that day. And it's from Okanagan Dye Works. The dyer is Nikki and she is from Vernon and I'm from Vernon. And turns out we also went to the same high school. And the colors of the yarn I chose are actually my high school colors too. So it's just, it's just a feel good garment, the experience and everything, even though it's not really my colors to wear, um, my daughter loves it. When she first put it on, she said, ooh, pretty and cozy, cozy. Um, it is a sock yarn, so it's a merino nylon blend, um, but she likes it. Soft enough for her, no complaints. Um, so yeah, the fact that I can get this on my toddler is amazing. That's a big win. Um, yes, and the color work I did with some leftover Sunday yarn from my stash, um, the color number is 1015. I'm not sure what it's called, but that's what I used for the um, ends of the sleeves, the body, and for the collar because um, I'm new to using hand dyed yarn, especially with the fade, color block fade. Um, I didn't think to save any of the first um, kind of maroon color. To do the collar afterwards um so the collar is done afterwards yeah didn't cross my mind to save it so <laughs> and i realized it after i'd finished the first color i was like oh i guess i'm gonna have a contrast collar <laughs> um yeah but it's okay i think it adds to the kind of like almost ringer tea retro vibe of the top and I ended up doing a fold over collar as well because I was watching TV and working on the collar and I realized I had done too many rounds and I didn't want to rip back. So I told myself, yeah, I'll just keep going and I'm going to do a fold over collar. <laughs> so there's no like pearl row or anything to help with the fold over. It's just straight ribbing. I don't remember how many rounds and then fold it over um, and then sewn inside. Okay, so the last thing to note is the project cost. So this one's a bit interesting to price out. One, I just can't remember how much I paid for the yarn. So I'm taking the online price, but I know that I didn't actually pay that cost in person. It was, um, Nikki was offering these pack of, um, it comes from a five pack. Um, and she was selling them at a lower cost at Knit City. But anyways, um, so the yarn comes from a five pack, which means you'd have to buy the whole five pack in order to get the same colors as me. So I can't just do um, like an individual skein project cost. So the online price for the Mother Earth pack of minis uh, is $43 Canadian. Um, and then... If you really want to, let's like be very detailed about this, but the Sunday yarn that I used for the ends of the sleeves and the body, um, one of those uh, would cost $10.95 before taxes. So what I've done here is actually, um, I will add in the taxes here. Let's see. Oh, I forgot to add in the tax for the, oh, no, sorry. I am not reading my notes properly. So with taxes, because I bought the yarn in person for the pack of minis, it's $45 and 15 cents. Um, and for the Sunday yarn, the adjusted cost with tax and shipping is $12 and eight cents. So the total project cost is $57 and 86 cents for this tea which is more expensive than my friday tea but i mean given that you have to have to buy this pack and i added in the total cost of a skein of sunday yarn even though i had it in my stash 
I'm just trying to be um, super transparent about what the cost um, could be for this kind of tea. Um, and then in terms of how long it took to knit up, I actually knit this up really quickly. I don't think I knit quite every day, but this was done in a week. Um, yes, it is toddler size, but I was really proud of myself that I knit something on fingering weight yarn in a week. Uh, the pattern calls for or recommends 3.5 millimeter needles. I'm slightly loose knitter, so I size down to 3.25 to get gauge. So recommendations for knitting up um, the viola tee. If you have never done any sort of color work before, you certainly could do it, but you definitely want to look up some tutorials about maybe yarn man management um, and floats because that is not explained in this pattern. You will need to figure out how you're going to do the color work. It is um, provided in chart form, the little scallop detail, um, but you're going to have to make a decision yourself on your float management. Since this is a garment for a child, my daughter, I just imagined um, her fingers getting caught in the floats every time she put on the tee. So I did really small floats. The largest my floats are, I think, is three stitches wide. Um, so I did trap my floats um, quite a bit. And if you're not sure what I mean by trapping floats and all that, um, that could be an indication that you need to look up uh, these techniques before you tackle um, some color work. Uh, so the next thing I learned working with hand dyed yarn and with it being super washed was that I couldn't just splice my ends together. So I did not do magic knot because I don't like the idea of knots, um, but I did uh, Russian joins and I found a quick tutorial. I think it's from Nimble Needles. I'll put it in the description and you actually use a small needle um, to kind of like sew the end of the yarn into itself and loop the ends together uh please see the tutorial <laughs> that will be better than me trying to explain it but that is what i used to join all the ends and that means i had no ends really to weave in except for the typical part where like working the sleeves and um in the color work areas as I said, um, Sarah Noel Knits is planning to release the pattern on June 14th, so um, please check her out. And yeah, it's a solid tea pattern for kids, um, ages 1 to 10. The last uh, item that I wanted to share with you guys today is my whip. And it is something I am creating for the Summer Flock Along 2023 for Flock Fiber Festival, which is happening in August. Uh, I don't know, I can't remember the exact dates. I know August 5th is one of the dates. It's in the Seattle area. I am creating this to wear um, at the Yarn Festival. Let me just pull it out. I started this on the day that the knit along started, which was May 29th. So just, over a week ago i'm tangled um i just joined in the round and split for sleeves here we go Woo! it is colorful guys it is but it's fun doesn't it just say like summer yarn festival in a garment uh because that's what i thought and this is locally hand dyed yarn from Black Cat Custom Yarn. I discovered them at Knit City last year, but I didn't actually buy this yarn while I was there. Um, so this is a lace weight. Uh, I actually did buy the worsted weight of this color, which is called Lux Clara at Knit City. And it was later um, because I was following them, or I am following them on Instagram, but at the time they had posted that they were going to be discontinuing their lace weight yarns and I decided to just grab all three skeins that they had available of the Lux Clara. No idea what I was going to do with this yarn. I'd always kind of thought that 
I was going to save it for something for Darcy because she definitely likes these colors. In fact, today, as I was working on it, she started pulling at it and saying, Mama, my dress, my dress. So um, she thinks I'm making her another item, but I told her she could wear it for fun, but it's obviously going to be too big for her. Um, but yeah, and then this summer flock along came up and the pattern, which is the Valenti, I just thought it would be in my also my obsession with fingering weight yarn now um it was just kind of like a stars aligning planets aligning moment um stars aligning really melissa yeah everything was just working out and the universe was telling me that i needed to use this yarn for that pattern so yes the pattern is from a canadian designer uh camille oh, i'm gonna butcher her name i'm so sorry decoteau Decoto, Cotto. Um, it's on the screen in the description box, guys. Um, I am so sorry. The Valenti is a top down, can I call it saddle construction? I don't want to say too much because I don't want to give away details that I shouldn't about this pattern. It is a paid pattern, um, but it's very clever um i have never worked in construction like this before it's very cool um it really is completely seamless top down as well and there is a stitch pattern it kind of looks like broken rib but it's not broken rib but as i've been working on this and I'm just thinking about the work that goes into grading and with a stitch pattern and with this construction it's just i have no idea how she did it um, it hurts my brain to even start to think about it, but yeah, so I'm glad that there is a pattern for something like this because this is definitely something I would not have been able to come up on my own, but I am enjoying it. This is definitely not a beginner pattern. Um, it's definitely an intermediate and it is specifically stated on the Ravelry page that you will need to know how to continue working in pattern so the stitch pattern and the row repeats um, on your own because that is not specifically stated in all the instruction lines so yeah the instructions will tell you like oh this is a, a pattern row or you know work the pattern on this part of the top but you need to do your own stitch pattern management and I don't want to make it sound more difficult than it is, but I just want to like stress that in case you miss that part on the page when you're going to buy this pattern. If you're good at reading your stitches and you're organized about keeping track of what row or round you're on, then you could totally do this pattern. But just so you know. Yeah, I'm very excited. Uh, I feel like I'm going quickly on this and probably too quickly because my hands are starting to feel it guys. I need to stop working on this for a few days, I think, but I'm just so excited to work on it. And I just like the colors kind of just make me happy while I'm working on it, which is, you know, these are not my typical colors. Like I wouldn't probably not buy this in a store. Um, but yeah, I'm a changed person. <laughs> All right, guys, that brings me to the end of everything I wanted to share with you today. If you're one of those people that's saying, hey, why haven't you talked about any new yarn yet? Um, I am planning to release a standalone video about new yarn because that is how much new yarn I have accumulated in the past month. But I have some thoughts about stash and you know, the yarn that I bought. So that is why I'm going to do a standalone video. When I release that, I am not quite sure, but it's going to be coming. So don't worry, I will be sharing new yarn and where I bought it from and everything. Um, yeah, so I will get to it when I get to it. <laughs> Thank you so much for hanging out with me, guys. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions or thoughts about today's episode. And until next time, happy knitting. Bye.